now we will have the reading of the law. Found in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17. Go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes chapter 12, read verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go to Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Now, sisters and brothers, reading of the law, that's what salvation is made of. Get baptized in the name of Jesus and keep his commandments, keep the Lord's commandments. Your salvation is etched in stone. As always, it is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. You know, sisters and brothers, there's so many things that we need to know right now because so many things are going on. But it's one thing I put together, and when I put this together, sisters and brothers, this lesson, this title, Israel, the Captive from Babylon to Babylon. Israel, the Captives from Babylon to Babylon. Because I used to fight in the old days with a lot of Israelites. What I mean fight is, I used to tell them, look, we as a people are not going to go back until Jesus comes. And he is the one that scattered us, and he is the one that's going to gather us. And he's going to do it. He took, he uh, uh, scattered us, the last of us, by the hand of Babylon. And he is going to recover us out of the hand of Babylon. And most people say, well, you know, Babylon is gone. I said, you don't know. I said, Babylon is still around. And we're going to deal with that sister and brother. Because the Lord had all these things written so we would understand what is going on. If you are expected to save yourself, then you need to know something. And we're going to start this in Jeremiah, the 20, 25th chapter. Jeremiah chapter 25. Because we as a people have a real habit of misbehaving, sister and brother. And people think that our misbehaving started when we ended up 
in the shores of America and other countries as slaves. No, no. Our misbehaving has got us put in slavery. And once you, get, and once you understand that, who put you here, then you don't have a reason to dis, dislike any other people, regardless of the race, the nationality, or color. Because what has happened to us was brought on by us. We're going to start this at 25 and 1. Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 1. Go ahead and read it. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah. Uh -huh. That was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Go ahead. The which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, uh -huh. From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, that is the three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord hath come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but ye have not hearkened. He said, look, I've been rising all this time, every day coming and speaking to you the word of God, but you have not listened. And that's the problem we have. We don't listen. Mm -hmm. We think that uh, trouble is for somebody else, not us, even though we're always in trouble. He said, I spoke to you and you have not hearkened. Go ahead and read. And the Lord hath sent unto you all his servants, the prophets, uh -huh. rising early and sending them. Go ahead. But ye have not hearkened nor inclined your ear to hear. Go ahead. They said, turn ye again now every one from his evil way uh -huh. and from the evil of your doing. Go ahead. And dwell in the land that the Lord hath given unto you uh -huh. and to your fathers forever and ever. Now he said, turn ye away from your evil way. When I was coming up in Israel a long time ago, before some of you was born and before, mm. before some of your mothers were born, mm. one of the biggest things they used to say all the time is, see, <clears throat> we got over here and, uh, and these Gentiles, they taught us all this wickedness. That's why we're wicked. I said, no, no. We was wicked before they were. The book said we talked to e taught the evil one they way. And nothing has changed, sisters and brothers. That's why I'm not surprised to see our young men jacking cars. I'm not surprised to see them beating people up, shooting people, attacking people. This did not start in America. It started when we was a nation. And the more freedom we had, the worse we got. Go ahead and read. Verse 6. And go not after other gods to serve them. And, and we love everybody else's God, mm -hmm. too. He said, go not other, after other gods to serve them. Go ahead and read. And to worship them. Uh -huh. and, to, and provoke me not to anger go ahead. with the works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. And he said, don't provoke me to anger with the works of your hand, and I will do you no hurt. He letting you know now. Don't provoke me, because if you provoke me, I'm going to hurt you. So don't provoke me, and I won't hurt you. Go ahead and read. Yet ye have not hearkened unto me, uh -huh. saith the Lord, Go ahead. that ye might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands to your own hurt. Not to his hurt, to your own mm -hmm. hurt. Is you haven't listened, that you would provoke me to your own hurt. Go ahead and read. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Go ahead. because you have not heard my word, Go ahead. behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, Go ahead. saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, uh -huh. my servant, and will bring them against this land again, and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and an hissing and a perpetual desolation. So now, pay attention to this. The Lord said, I will sin and take the people of the north and Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. You mean Nebuchadnezzar served God? You mean he feared God? He didn't have to, and Nebuchadnezzar didn't have to fear God to be his servant. Satan and the evil angels are the Lord's servants. The Lord told you he destroyed Egypt by sending evil angels among them. So if the Lord tell Nebuchadnezzar, go down there and knock Judah off. What Nebuchadnezzar going to do? He going to go down there and knock Judah off. The Babylonians just did the sign, well, I think I, we need to conquer somebody, so I think I wander on down and knock Judah off. Uh-uh. The Lord sent and brought them down. So this is what I want you to get in your mind. This is all the Lord. And because of our misbehaving. Go ahead and read. 
Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth uh -huh. and the voice of gladness. The voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. Go ahead. The sound of the millstones and the light of the candle. Uh -huh. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. He said, this whole land, I'm going to destroy it all. He's going to do the good along with the bad because the bad outweighed the good. Mm -hmm. And when the bad outweighed the good, it's time for the Lord to step in. That happened with Sodom and Gomorrah. Didn't Abraham bargain with God? If you can find 50, okay, I won't destroy them. If you can find 40, I won't. If God he got down to 10, he said, I won't destroy them. And he couldn't even find 10 people. So he destroyed all of Sodom and Gomorrah. So the same thing got with Israel. They had become outright. When I said they, these are our ancestors. Outright wicked sisters and brothers. And he said, I'm going to let you be taken by the Babylonian, and you're going to serve them for 70 years. That 70 years have a little wrinkle in it. 70 years turn, and, and turn into 70 weeks. But we'll be back here. Let's go into 2 Kings, the 24th chapter. 2 Kings, chapter 24. Because, sisters and brothers, the Lord warned us. It's not like he just decided, I'm going to go down there and knock Judah off. He warned us. He said he rose, rose up early. All his prophets rose up early and coming and tell us, stop doing wickedness. And look like the more blessed the Lord got, gave, uh, gave, the more blessing he gave us, the wickeder we got. And I noticed that a little, little, uh, little right now. I grew up in the South, sister and brother, in Palm Bluff, Arkansas. November, I'll be, November 24th, I'll be 80 years old, so I've been around a minute. And I've seen, when the, when the foot was on the neck of Israel, we was all cool and docile and everything. <laughs> but as our freedoms increased, we all, we got bold and we got boisterous, and we're going to show somebody else we ain't going to do nothing, so we turn around and hurt our own people. I have lived to see all of that. But here in 2 Kings, this is when the Lord, you know, he, he's going to do what he told you he was going to do because we don't listen. 2 Kings chapter 24, 2 Kings chapter 24, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 24 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up. And Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Uh-huh. Then he turned and rebelled against him. Now, see, the Lord broke a deal with Jehoiakim. He said, look, all you got to do is pay tribute to the Babylonians and Nebuchadnezzar and his people. I'll let you be a nation. you still be king. And you still have some sovereignty. you still have princes. But you got to pay tribute. But... Jehoiakim did, he rebelled. And what happened? Go ahead and read. And the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldeans. Who sent, the, who the sent against him? The Lord sent against him the bands of the Chaldeans. Go ahead and read. And the bands of the Syrians. Uh -huh. And bands of the Moabites. Uh -huh. And bands of the children of Ammon. Go ahead. And sent them against Judah to destroy it. So okay. not only did he send, before Babylon, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon took him out, he beat them down by some of the other nations. Go ahead. According to the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants, the prophets. Go ahead. Surely at the commandment of the Lord came this upon Judah to remove them out of his sight for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did. Yeah, and I hear brothers always tell me, well, they went to the African and kidnapped us. Look, you was enslaved then. You just didn't know it. That's why you should pay attention to black history. You find out you've been enslaved more than you have been a nation. Longer. So now, he came and he took them all down. Skip down to verse 6. Verse 6 and go ahead. So Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiachin, his son, reigned in his stead. So now, Jehoiakim died, so his son took over. Let's see what happened to him. Skip down to verse 9. Verse 9 and go ahead. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, 
according to all that his father had done. And he did the same thing. We never learn. You saw that Nebuchadnezzar, the Lord said, Nebuchadnezzar to take your father out. Now, mm -hmm. time you become king, you do evil in the sight of the Lord. And, you know, it is not like I didn't know no better because the prophet was constantly telling him. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. And Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city, and his servants did besiege it. So now he sent his, he, so he sent his servants, and they besieged the city. Skip down to verse 15, and what happened? Go ahead. And he carried away Jehoiachin to Babylon, uh -huh. and the king's mother, and the king's wives, and his officers, and the mighty of the land, those carried he into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. So he went and he got him and carried him off. Then he set up another one. Skip down to verse 17. Go ahead and read. And the king of Babylon made Madaniah, his father's brother, king in his stead, uh -huh. and changed his name to Zedekiah. So now he took another royal seat. The brother of this king's uh, father, he brought out Madaniah and changed his name to Zedekiah and made him a king and Nebuchadnezzar broke a deal with him. Zedekiah did the same thing, sisters and brothers. He rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar. Another lesson, we'll show you that God brokered all of these deals. I'm going to let you rule your own people. You just have to pay tribute to Nebuchadnezzar and his people, the Gentiles. They called in. But what we did, we rebelled. Let's go to Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. So Zedekiah, he did the same thing that Jehoiakim did. He did, uh, did the same thing that Jeho Jehoiakim did. Messed up the deal that God had made. Because sometimes the Lord... Fix you even say, he said it's going to be a little sanctuary to his people even in captivity. Sometimes the Lord bless you and you don't know it and you still start misbehaving. And all of a sudden, your life started to go down the toilet. What happened? You didn't pay attention. You didn't acknowledge where your blessing came from. And you didn't behave. So you have to do more and say, well, you know, the Lord has really blessed me. You have to start acting like you're blessed. And don't disobey God. Jeremiah 29 and verse 1. Jeremiah 29 and 1. Go ahead and read. Now these are the words of, of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captive, and to the priests, and to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Now, what happened was, Nebuchadnezzar come in and he took down Jehoiakim. They set up his son Jehoiachin. He came in and he took down him. So now, at this time, Zedekiah was ruling. But Jeremiah wrote a letter to the people that was in captive in Babylon. God had him to write this letter. And let's look at what was in this letter, sisters and brothers. Skip down to verse 4, because there's something to be learned by paying attention to this letter. Verse 4, go ahead. Thus said the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. the God of Israel, go ahead. unto all that are carried away captives, uh -huh. whom I have caused to be carried away. Who? Whom? Whom I have caused to be carried away. Go ahead. From Jerusalem unto Babylon. Uh huh. Build ye houses uh -huh. and dwell in them. Uh huh. And plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. So he knew that this was going to be long. So don't just be sitting around doing nothing. Build you houses. Plant you crops and stuff so you can feed yourself. Go ahead and read. Take ye wives uh -huh. and beget sons and daughters. Go ahead. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands. Go ahead. That they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. So I want you to marry your sons and daughters off to one another so you can have children and increase in this captivity. So you won't come to nothing. Go ahead and read. And seek the peace of the city. This is what we... Fail to pay attention to. Seek 
and seek the peace of the city. Go ahead. With the I have called you to be carried away captive. So because God is the one that sits you there. Seek the peace of the city where I have called you to be carried away captive. Go ahead and read. And pray unto the Lord for it. And pray unto the Lord for it. I ain't praying for this old wicked America. Where are you going? Right. You know why he said pray and seek the peace? Read it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For in the peace thereof shall you have peace. This is something that we have overlooked, sisters mm -hmm. and brothers. Well, you know, brother running around, well, I want America to come to his knees. Then what's going to happen to you? In the old days, the Hebrew Israelites used to say all the time, well, be glad that Russia going to do this because they misunderstood uh, 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 some scripture that was, that was written for Babylon the Great. They tried to say America. Yeah, you see, Russia going to knock America off. I said, I guess Russia going to come over here and knock off all the white folks. <laughs> and he going to tell you, Negro. You have my blessing. I'm going to get a company to you, country to you. So they got brothers, uh, they got Israelites in Russia, but they so depressed, you don't ever hear about them. So now, why is it, what verse was that? We just finished verse 7. Why is it that you are in a city that you want to come down to a nation and you live there, you get your substance there, you getting your pension there, you getting your social security there? Mm -hmm. If we go down, everybody goes down. But this is not coming from me. Who is it that the Lord, who is it that Jeremiah told him that? The captain. Finish that. Go ahead. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be, in, that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which he calls to, to be dreams. Go ahead. For they prophesy falsely unto you uh -huh. in my name. So you got all these dreamers prophesying in the name of the Lord. The Lord going to do this to this people. He going to do that. And he, look, he said, don't let them deceive you. Go ahead and read. I have not sent them, saith uh -huh. the Lord. Uh -huh. But thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you uh -huh. and perform my good work toward you, my good word toward you, and causing you to return to this place. It's because I got a time set that you're going to serve a sinner. And when that time come, at that time it was 70 years. Now Israel did go back in 70 years, but, the, but not all Israel, just Judah, sister and brother. But still, the Lord is going to bring Everybody back because at this time, Babylon is the one that's going to be ruling this world. So Zedekiah rebelled against Babylon, and so the Lord took him out too. Let's go into 2 Kings, the 25th chapter. See, the Lord tried, see, another scripture, another lesson we'll show you that the deal that the Lord made, the Lord told Zedekiah, you have my covenant you have broken. My covenant. He's the one that broke this covenant between Nebuchadnezzar and Zedekiah. But we think that the Lord ain't got nothing to do with it. We even think that the Lord don't have nothing to do with our captivity. God got everything to do with it. Now, how can you hate a, per a, a people that God commanded to take you down? What are they going to do? They're more obedient than you are. First King 25, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Thank you. I'm sorry, Second King 25 and verse 1. I'm looking right at it. Ain't nothing wrong with my eyes. I just can't see the person in the last row. Second King 25 and verse 1. Okay, read it. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, and the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, uh -huh. he and all his host, against Jerusalem, uh -huh. and pitched against it, uh -huh. and they built forts against it round about. That's because Zedekiah rebelled, just like Jehoiakim and Jehoiakim mm -hmm. did. So he came down there, and he pitched it, uh, uh, and they surrounded it. Go ahead and read. And the city was besieged 
until the 11th year of King Zedekiah. Go ahead. And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city, uh -huh. and there was no bread for the people of the land. So that's what they did in those days. What they do is they would surround your city. Can't nobody get in. Can't nobody go out. So whatever food you got in there, when you eat it up, you're going to have to come out. Go ahead and read. And the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate between two walls, uh -huh. which is by the king's guard. Go ahead. Now the Chaldees were against the city round about, Go ahead. and the king went the way toward the plain. Uh -huh. And the army of the Chaldees pursued after the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, uh -huh. and all his army were scattered from him. So now Zedekiah is going to take off in the night and leave his people mm -hmm. and the men of war. But look, the, the Babylonians knew about that. So they caught him out there and they called Zedekiah when all his army was scattered from him. Go ahead and read. So they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon to Riblah. Go and ahead. they gave judgment upon him. Uh -huh. And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. Go ahead. And put out the eyes of Zedekiah. Uh -huh. And bound him with fetters of brass and carried him to Babylon. Look, Nebuchadnezzar was real hard on Zedekiah. Because he set him up and did him good. Mm -hmm. Zedekiah rebelled and he got... Angry, so he did something that would really haunt Zedekiah the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. He killed, let's, he killed all of his children before his face, and then he blinded him. The last sight you saw when you could see was your children mm -hmm. being slain. Well, that's a bad punishment, ain't it? Because Zedekiah, he had a good deal going on. God had broken the deal. So Nebuchadnezzar did it, but I tell you what, he didn't do it without God's permission. Think about it. Go ahead and read. And in the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem. Go ahead. And he burnt the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and every great man's house burnt he with fire. So he sent his... General down there, and they burnt all, they burnt the temple that Solomon built. And they burnt all of the great houses that, because Israel always had people that was rich. Go ahead and read. And all the army of the Chaldees that were with the captain of the guard break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. And they broke down the walls of Jerusalem because they weren't going to have no more rebellion. Go ahead and read. Now the rest of the people that were left in the city and the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babylon went with the remnant of the multitude did Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carry away. Now that was the last king that we have ever had, King Zedekiah. From that day to this one, we have never had a king or a priest. He's the last king we ever had. So nobody, matter who said that they're king of Jerusalem, not out of us. No matter who said they're a prince of Jerusalem, not from us. Like I saw a bunch of Israelites some years, a, a, a few years back, they had maybe a year or two back, they had a brother up there, they crowned him the crown prince of Jerusalem. How are you going to be prince of another country that somebody else is running? Sometimes we so foolish, it's staggering. So that was the last king we ever had. And then that's when the Lord was through with us. That's when he had the temple on. So he didn't have the temple torn down the first three times, the, the two times. But on the third, he said, it's over with. I'm through with it. I'm tired of, rebe I'm tired of repenting. Then he had the temple thrown down. Then he had all the, all the big houses thrown down. Then he had the walls destroyed. And whoever was left, he took him to, Drew, to uh, Babylon, and he said, you're going to be there for 70 years. Let's go back to Jeremiah, the 25th chapter. Back to Jeremiah, the 25th chapter. Because we need to understand this, sisters and brothers. It's just like I saw, when I saw, you know, how the people was uh, attacking the Asian people, the Chinese, you know, because I guess after this pandemic, like they had something to do with it. Then I saw one of us attack the old Chinese guy. That cut me to my heart. Why are you doing this and you knew this, this is what's been done to you? The last people on the earth 
to do somebody's harm because of their nationality or their race is us, yes. should be us. Yep. Like when I was in Washington Prime, we used to have this guy, he didn't like women. I used to tell him, look, man, ain't your, don't you have sisters? Yeah. Ain't your mama a, a, a woman? Yeah. Well, why don't you like, oh, they do all this. I said, look, I'm going to tell you something. You are a victim and your woman is a victim. So what you're going to do is you're going to victimize the victim. That make you worse than a person that's victimizing us. We need to know and pay attention, sisters and brothers. It is our God that put us here. We're going to start this at verse 11. Jeremiah 25, and we're going to start reading at verse 11. Go ahead and read. And this whole land shall be a desolation uh -huh. and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. Now this whole land is going to be a desolation and an astonishment. And he said, and these nations, Israel and all the other nations around, going to serve the king of Babylon 70 years. In case nobody's noticed it, the Gentiles have been in charge of this world since the days of Nebuchadnezzar. Ham had his time. It passed. Shem had his time. Now you're under the rule of the children of Japheth. Everywhere you go, they're ruling. That's why brothers say, well, you know the Chinese are Moabites. No, they're not. The Moabites are black as you are. Chinese are Gentiles. Ain't nobody ruling China but Chinese. Ain't that correct? What verse are we? We have verse 12. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass when 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation said the Lord, for their iniquity. And now, the I land want you to pay attention to this. He said, now, once the 70 years have passed, I'm going to punish the king of Babylon and that nation. Go mm -hmm. ahead and read. Said the Lord, uh -huh. for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans and will make it perpetual desolation. Go ahead. And I will bring upon that land all my words, which I have pronounced against it. Now, he, he said, now, I'm going to deal with Nebuchadnezzar because he said in other scriptures, I was just a little pleased. But you have fathered the affliction. So Nebuchadnezzar take him now, slap him around a little bit. But Nebuchadnezzar slapped him around, slapped him down, stumped on him. Him and his children, you understand? Mm -hmm. And was overzealous. You got to do what God said, but you don't have to put your own emotions into it. He said, but once they do that, I'm going to punish them. Go ahead and read. Even all that is written in this book which Jeremiah hath prophesied against all the nations. And it's going to happen. Go ahead and read. For many nations and great kings have served themselves of them also. Uh -huh. And I will recompense them according to their deeds and according to the works of their own hands. Now, sisters and brothers, pay attention to this. For many nations and great kings going to serve themselves also, and I will recompense them according to their deeds, according to the works of their hands. Many nations and a whole lot of kings. Now, we're going to investigate this a little bit. So we're going to see what happened to Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon. Let's go into Daniel, the fifth chapter. Daniel, the fifth chapter. See, this is how you find stuff out, sister and brother. Because we are going to investigate how Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon came to an end. Daniel chapter 5. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Daniel chapter 5 and verse 1. See, this, when you pay attention, sister and brother, you know God can't lie, then you have to say, hey, it's something big, it's more to this than meet the eye. Verse, five, verse 1, brother, 5 and 1, go ahead. Belshazzar, the king, made a feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. That is, Belshazzar was Nebuchadnezzar's son. Mm -hmm. And he drank wine, made a thousand, then he did something real stupid. Go ahead and read. Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the gold and, and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem. That was real stupid. 
Go ahead and read. That the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Go ahead. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. Go ahead. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. Uh huh. And the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Now, while he was sitting there with his concubines and his wives and his friends cavorting, all of a sudden, a hand showed up, poof. And it went over there and wrote on the wall, the plaster of the wall. All of a sudden, he got the king's attention. He probably was drunk. He said while he was in his wine, right? Mm -hmm. But drama can sober you up in a minute. Let's see what happened. Go ahead and read. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, uh -huh. and his knees smote one against another. He wasn't too drunk to recognize mm -hmm. that. Because when your knees start knocking, you're scared, ain't you? Go ahead and read. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. Uh -huh. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. So he must have had a, a lamentous cry because mm -hmm. he said it cried aloud. Go ahead and read. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Go ahead. Then was the king Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Go ahead. Now the queen, by the reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Now, let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. Now, oh, now the queen now. He must have mm -hmm. didn't have her in there while he was cavort with all them concubines. <laughs> <laughs> and them other wives on the side. So this was either the queen, his wife, or the queen mother. But whatever mm -hmm. it is, she was the queen. Mm -hmm. And she came in and said, don't let this trouble you. Go ahead and read. There's a man in thy kingdom, and whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, was found in him. Uh -huh. Whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say, thy father, made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. The real king, the one that set everything up. So look, there was a man in this time had a bunch, had the knowledge of God in it. He said, God, but still, we know what he's talking about. Go ahead and read. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpret interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts Go ahead. were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar, now let, now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. See, Daniel's uh, Gentile name was Belteshazzar. That's his slave name, you know. So uh, call him. And so... She said, you got a man here named Daniel. He can, he, can, he can take care of his business. Go ahead and read. Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, uh -huh. whom the king my father brought out of Jewry? Now look, Nebuchadnezzar had made him the master of the musicians and the mm -hmm. sued sales and the wise men. But you know, being that Daniel was a captive, because the captain don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. It's like, like we ain't supposed to know nothing. You understand? But they don't understand. The captains is the one that the Lord gave the oracles of God to. Mm -hmm. We are the only ones that know something, whether you want to accept it or not. Go ahead and recall. Look what you have been taught all your life as the word of God. And look what you know now. It's just like you come on a different planet. Go ahead and read. I have even heard of thee. I the, have even heard of thee. Go ahead. That the spirit of the gods is in thee. Uh-huh. And that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Go ahead. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof, but they could not show the interpretation of the thing. Go ahead. And I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretation and dissolve doubts. 
Uh, now, if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. See, Daniel didn't need all that. You can't bring a man of God to do his job with money. God is already compelled to do this. He's going to have to do it. Verse 17, go ahead. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let thy gifts be to thyself. Uh -huh. and give thy rewards to another. Go ahead. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. He said, look, you can keep your gift. And whatever reward you got, give it to somebody else. But I'm going to read this writing. Because he had to read the writing. Why? Because he was the prophet of God. Skip down to verse 25. And he brought it directly to him. Verse 25. Go ahead. And this is the writing that was written. Uh -huh. Many, many to kill you farson. Go ahead. This is the interpretation of the He's, thing. So this is the right. So now I'm going to tell you what it means. Go ahead and read. Many, God have numbered thy kingdom and finished it. God to number your kingdom, mister, and finished it. Go ahead. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. You have been weighed in the balance and you are, found, and you are lacking. Go ahead. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. No, I done gave your kingdom away and you don't even know it. How quick did he get that they get it? Go ahead and read. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him uh -huh. that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Daniel knew that that didn't mean nothing because he wasn't going to be around. Go ahead. And that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain, and Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about threescore and two years old. Look, sister, brother, the Lord had him killed at night. Then there is the, the median. I want to say, uh, uh, could you get this air out of my ear over here? It's really killing me. There is the median. To the Mede, you know who the Medes are now? The Russians. Persians are the Iranian sister and brother. So there is the Mede inherited the kingdom. There was not one shot fired. There was not one sword stabbed anybody. But the Lord told Babylon that he was going to take him down by a mark of nations. Didn't it say many nations and many kings? Mm. So now, this is the end of the Babylonian, Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon sisters and brothers. This is the end of it. It was inherited by one man, and it was not destroyed by many nations. Being that God can't lie, then there must be another Babylon. Mm -hmm. uh, Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon was not the end of Babylon. But he said he's going to serve for 70 years, and that's when the 70 years went up, when Darius, when uh, 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 Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar's son, went down, and Darius inherited the kingdom. Now let's go into 2 Chronicles, the 36th chapter. 2 Chronicles chapter 36. So get it in your mind that that is the end of it. You saw the end of Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon. It went with his son. When the Lord had his son killed at night, then it went to the Medo-Persian. That's why I said Medo-Persian because it was the Mede that took it first. But the Persian did more with it. We got another lesson to show you what that is too, sisters and brothers. 2 Chronicles chapter 36. Because here, because the Lord said they were going to go into captivity and they were going to be there. Now let's start at 36 and 20. Start at uh, 36 and uh, uh, 20. In fact, let's do something here. Let's go back up to 19 chapter and let you know, because this is going to show you how that the Lord, when he, what, what the Lord did in Zedekiah's day. The 19th verse, rather. Verse 19. Verse 19. Read it. And they burnt the house of God and break down the wall of Jerusalem and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire and destroy all the goodly vessels thereof. Now that was 70 years ago. Go ahead and read. 
And them that had escaped from the sword carried him away to Babylon, uh -huh. where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. That would have been the 70 years. Right. They let you know. Go ahead and read. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths. For as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath. To fulfill three score and ten years. So now, so it's going to remain desolate, and, and that's the only way she was going to keep her Sabbath. Well, in other words, as long as we was in it, we were going to pollute it. And we're going to serve Nebuchadnezzar and his son, sons for 70 years. Go ahead and read. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, uh -huh. that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, Go ahead. the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, uh -huh. that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Now, this is, king, this is Cyrus, king of Persia. He made a proclamation and he put it in writing, saying, go ahead and read. Thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, uh -huh. all the kingdoms of the earth hath the Lord God of heaven given me. So this guy knew who, where he got his power right. from, didn't he? All of the power on earth was given to me by the God of heaven. Go mm -hmm. ahead and read. And he had charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, uh -huh. which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? The Lord his God be with him and let him go up. Now, he said, God has charged me to build a house in Jerusalem. Because that was 70 years was up. That's right. So now, who going to go and deal with this? We have another, another lesson to tell you who it was that got together. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And they went up led by a governor, one that became governor, which was uh, uh, Zerubbabel. But then that's another lesson. But he said, who's going to do this? But there's one thing I want to show you. Even though these, he said he's the king of Persia, still, it was the king. He was a Persian that was ruling Babylon. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go into Ezra's the fifth chapter. Ezra chapter five. And what we're going to do, we're going to go right on, right down to verse 13. We're going we're gonna to skip all the rest of it. We don't need to uh, lead into it because this is Cyrus. We just seen him give the proclamation, didn't he? But let's see what he's really, he said king of Persia, but let's see what he really is king over. Verse 13. We're just going to read verse 13. Okay, read it. But in the first year of Cyrus, the king of Babylon. Wait a minute. The first year of Cyrus, the king of what? Babylon. Even though they call it by other names, the kingdom was still Babylon, mm -hmm. sister and brother. And we're going to show you that. The king of Babylon. Go ahead and read. The same king Cyrus made a decree to build this house of God. So the same Cyrus made a decree to build a house of God. Because this is the Gentile dynasty, sisters and brothers. Started with Nebuchadnezzar. And no matter where you find it, it is still the same, even though it's called by a different name. And when it come up again, it's going to come up as one beast. Let's go to Revelation, the 13th chapter. You can put, your, uh, we'll be back. No, that's all right. We got time. Revelation, the 13th chapter. We want to show you something here. Because the Lord already put this thing in order. And from with Babylon, he scattered us. And from Babylon, he is going to gather us. Revelation 13 and 1. Revelation 13 and 1. 13 and 1. Okay, read it. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, uh -huh. having seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. And upon his horns, ten crowns. Go ahead. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. Now, we're going we gonna to show you later who this but this, who this beast is, sisters and brothers. Seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead and read. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Uh -huh. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. Go ahead. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Uh -huh. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat in great authority. Go ahead. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. Now, we're going to go and see this same beast. But we're going to see it come under seven different names, sisters and brothers. Starting with Nebuchadnezzar. 
and Babylon. So let's go back to Daniel's the seventh chapter. We're going to look at this same thing when they came individually, but when they come back, it is going to be as a unit. Daniel chapter 7, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Daniel chapter 7, and we're going to read, start reading at verse 1. The same ones that made up that beast in the 13th chapter of Revelation, sisters and brothers, was made up by the descendants of these people who have ruled from generation to generation, passing on from the hand of a Gentile to a hand of a Gentile to a hand of a Gentile. Nobody got in between. They talk about Shaka, great African warrior. Still, the Gentiles took him out, didn't they? Because it is the time that the Gentiles start with Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 1, Daniel 7 and 1. Go ahead and read. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, uh -huh. Daniel had a dream and, and visions of his head upon his bed. Go ahead. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matter. Uh -huh. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Go ahead. And four great beasts came up from the sea, uh -huh. diverse one from another. Now, these are four nations, sisters and brothers. Let's look at them. What was the first one? Go ahead. The first was like a lion. And had eagle's wings. Uh -huh. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the feet as a man, uh -huh. and a man's heart was given to it. Now that was Babylon, sister and brother. And the one that led it, Nebuchadnezzar, the Lord slapped them down, and Nebuchadnezzar come up prophesying better than Daniel. That mean he brought him up, because he drove him wild for seven years, and then when he gave him his sent back, the sense back, he knew that the God of Israel ruled his earth. Right. That's the Babylonian Empire. Go ahead and read. And behold another beast, uh -huh. a second, like to a bear. Go ahead. And it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Now, this is the Medo-Persian Empire, sisters and brothers. We had characteristics of this. Then this beast had, had a, 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 a paws like a bear, mouth of a lion. Go ahead and read. And after this I beheld... And lo, another, like a leopard, uh -huh. which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. Go ahead. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. That's the Greek empire. You saw characteristics of that also in that beast in the 13th chapter of Revelation, didn't we? One, you know, that looked like a leopard. Go ahead and read. After this I saw the night vision, uh -huh. and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong exceedingly. Go ahead. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces. It stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, uh -huh. and it had ten horns. Roman Empire. Didn't it say that beast had ten horns? Yes. So we see all of these are the same organization. This is the same Gentile dynasty, sisters and brothers, even though they came under their own name. It was still Babylon. Now let's go back. Let's go back to Daniel, the second chapter, because I want to show you the same thing to show you that this is one people. One people, sisters and brothers. Because I want to show you this image. And I'm going to show you also the nation individually to show you that this image is one. So I want you to put that on the screen. Which is uh, 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 what we're going to read about in a minute. But we're going to Daniel's the second chapter. Be prepared. We, we wait till I read it first and then you put it up. Daniel's the second chapter. One image, sisters and brothers. And this one image represented all of the Gentiles' rulership. Daniel's two and one. Go ahead and read. And in the second year of the, of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, uh -huh. Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep break from him. Go ahead. Then the king commanded to call the magicians and the astrologers and the sorcerers and the Chaldeans for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And they couldn't show it, just like it was. So now what had happened is he had to call Daniel the captive. So when he called Daniel, 
Daniel's not only told him what the dream was, because he couldn't remember, he told him what the dream meant. So skip down to verse 31. Verse 31. Just like Daniel later told his son, he had already told. That's why the queen told Belshazzar, his son, look, you got somebody in your kingdom that know all of this stuff. Seek him. So Daniel said, look, I'll tell you what this image is, and I'll tell you what it stands for. Go ahead and read. Thou, O king, saw us, and behold, a great image. Uh -huh. This great image, whose brightness was, ex was excellent, Go ahead. stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. Go ahead. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, Go ahead. his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Go ahead. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet uh -huh. that, were of, that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. He said, now you saw all this image. And he gave, and all these oaths of what it looked like. He said, I saw a stone without hand, a stone cut out without hand, mm -hmm. smote this image on the feet and broke it in pieces. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together. Go ahead. And became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. Uh -huh. And the wind carried them away, and no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. So now this stone that smote this image, this image is the image of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. And Rome, beast, uh, uh, and Rome was the rise and fall ten times. So this image had feet with ten toes on it. But this stone broke it up and it was scattered. Go ahead and read. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Is this is the dream, and we're going to tell the interpretation of it. Go ahead and read. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. Go ahead. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. Go ahead. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand. Go ahead. He said, now you, Nebuchadnezzar, king of kings. This whole world has been given to you. No matter where they drill at, they are given into your hands. Go ahead and read. And hath made thee ruler over them all. Go ahead. Thou art this head of gold. Now you are this head of gold. Go ahead. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. Go ahead. And another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. The other king going to rise after Nebuchadnezzar, Medo-Persia. And then another one's going to rise, the third one, that's the Greek empire, that's mm. going to bear rule over all the earth. Go ahead. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. Go ahead. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Uh -huh. But there shall be in it of strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. So now is it going to be weak nations and strong nations in it? But what's going to happen? Keep reading. And as, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, uh -huh. so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Now, partly strong and partly broken. Now, let's see what's going to happen in the days of these kings. Skip down and read 44, verse 44. Go ahead. And in the days of these kings, Shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom uh -huh. which shall never be destroyed? Uh -huh. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, Go ahead. but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Now, in the days of each king, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Now, I want you to put this statue up here, of uh, uh, this great statue in the second chapter. Now, this statue here, Represent the Gentile dynasty, sisters and brothers. You notice it is one statue and it's all together, isn't it? It's not broken up into pieces. So you look at the head. You got Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and on the feet, you know what the feet are? We look it up right now, the European Union. We're looking at it right now. Now show me the other statue. With, with, now we look here. Got the band. You got Nebuchadnezzar, the lion, that's the head of gold. We have the bear, that's the arm, 
and, and stomach. Then you have the uh, 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 waist part and down to the knees. You have grease. And this terrible beast, the legs and the feet, is wrong. Why then that this stone smite this statue on the feet? I want you to show you. You got it up there. Show it to me. See what happened to it, this stone. Because it said, stone cut out without hand, and it grew and became an entire mountain. Who did this stone represent, sisters and brother? It represents Jesus, sisters and brother. Why did it smite the image on the feet? Because that's all that's going to be around. Nebuchadnezzar said, this generation, he died. Medo-Persian came, they went. They had their power and went. The Greek had his power and it's gone. And the Roman is supposed to rise and fall ten times. And the 10th resurrection right now is taking place in, the U in Western Europe. And the whole world is sleeping on it. So he hit the statue on the toes because that's all that's going to be left when Jesus comes. But still, they still maintain one name. And let's go into Revelation the 17th chapter and see what that name is. Revelation chapter 17. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. The Lord laid this thing out to let you know. They come on a different name, Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, and Rome, but still it is Babylon. That's why I gave show you that had that statue gave that image of that statue to Nebuchadnezzar so Daniel could explain it and let them know this is the Gentile dynasty. Ain't nobody, no other son of Noah ruled but the Gentiles from the time of Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon even to this day, sisters and brothers. And it lets you know that stone, lets you know that God is the one going to bring an end to it. That's why I know this thing is always almost over with because the Lord said in the days of this king, we read it, didn't we? Shall the God of heaven set up in the kingdom? And we're looking at him. That means we are in the days of these kings. And it's going to happen. Whether you're ignorant or informed, it's going to happen. But still, one statue, 17 and 1. Go ahead and read. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. I'm going to show the judge but of this great religion that says it's from God and it's not. That's why it's called the great whore That's right. that sits upon many waters. Who are the waters? That's you. Because you got Catholic and Protestant, which are all Sunday Christians, all over the world. They all rule by the same rule. They all worship it on Sunday. They all have a Christmas tree in their house on Christmas. They all teach that Christ rose on Easter Sunday. They all teach that you go on to heaven. So it ain't but one. Because we're going to show you the mama and who are the children. It'll talk about it. Go ahead and read. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So all the kings of the earth have given uh, a respect to this great religion. Because mm -hmm. when they go to Italy, they go and they kiss the, the leaders' front rain, right. don't they? And so now all the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. What is the wine of her fornication? Bad doctrine. Just like I used to say, just like I said earlier. Look at all the people under all the certain denominations in all them houses tomorrow. They're going to be all gathered tomorrow. Go ahead and read. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast uh -huh. full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And that's what we just got through reading? Mm -hmm. What do you mean seven heads? Where does seven heads come from? Babylonian head, that's one. Medo-Persian head, that's two. Then you had the Greek head, which was four, which made six. And then you had the Roman head, which was seven. Come out of that system. But when they come back, they're going to come back as ten nations ruling that part of the world. And they have a name that they come under, the European Union. 
and the world is sleeping on it. Go ahead. What is that? Seven head and ten horns. Go ahead and read. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color uh -huh. and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Go ahead. Having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Looks good, but the doctrine will kill you. Go ahead and read. And upon her forehead was a name written. Uh-huh. Mystery, Babylon the Great. Now, this the is the Babylon that we're looking over now. You understand? Mystery, Babylon the Great. Go ahead and read. The mother of harlots. The mother of harlots. What does it mean, the mother of harlots? She's called a whore that sits on many waters, so all her daughters are whores too. Use the language. But they all teach contrary, and they're all saying that they are God's wife. He's married to him. He ain't married to her. Israel is God's wife. Well, Judah is right now. Israel is kind of divorced right now, but he's going to remarry Israel. But even she herself called herself the mother church. Ain't that correct? That's right. So they're all the churches in the West come out of her. But go ahead and read. And abominations of the earth. And abominations of the earth. So what is it called? Babylon, ain't it? Mm -hmm. This is, you got Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon. But in the last day when the European Union, that is Babylon the Great in Western Europe, sister and brother. So now God is going to show you the prophecy said, because he said she's going to be taken down by many nations, not just one. Yes, sir.